Welcome to Unlock You with Dr. Shaden Crawford. I'm so excited to help you get unlocked in the area where you may feel disqualified. Have you gone through a divorce, a heartbreak, a loss, grief, um, some kind of a breakup that just broke your heart in a way that it feels like there's no recovery? We have an inspiring story of this amazing couple, and they are going to share their book, their story of how they have overcome life, divorce, and rebuilding in a way that's actually really magical and beautiful. And fact, their son-in-law was one of our other guests, Preston Woody. So make sure you That's check right. out That's that right. episode. Well, actually we have several with him and we have more with Barbie as well. So Barbie and Richard Armenta are our guests today. Did I say it right? That's correct. That is correct. <laughs> that is correct. Um, and they are gonna share about their book and experience. So what do you think are common lies people believe, whether it's a long-term living together relationship or a divorce, what are the disqualifying beliefs many of us believe? I think for me personally, I had gone through not one, but two divorces. Mm -hmm. And after having parents that were married for 54 years, I just thought that would be my story. And so for me, I just thought um, that alone counted me out. Mm -hmm. That So disqualified. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so I wasn't going to be anyone's choice for their um, son, brother, family member, you know, um, <laughs> It's not. Yeah. It's true. It's true. It's true. Because uh, on paper that looks so bad, but in reality, there's there's always more to the story, and yeah. God's a redeemer. Mm -hmm. But just those those things, I just thought I was broken. Mm -hmm. you know? So I'm disqualified. I'm broken. What do you yeah. think are coming for men? I think I think common really for me, and it might be men, it might be a lot of people in mm -hmm. life. You know, yeah. it's, it's 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 bad choices. Hmm. You've walked through life. You've made these decisions. You made these poor choices that have led to horrible situations in life. Right. And now you feel like you are unqualified, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, that you're unusable, mm -hmm. um, you know, that uh, you might be stuck in a situation that you don't really see anything that's that to be better, mm -hmm. you know, or something better to shoot for. You feel like this is the best that I'm going to get yeah. mm -hmm. right here. And I think that's just a complete lie that mm -hmm. we buy into that my bad choices are something that I'll always live through. Yeah. You know, that I'm not gonna be used for something better and I not qualify for something better. Mm -hmm. So I think that to me, that is a, one of the big blockers and, and, and um, kind of a lie that we believe in life and it's completely untrue. Yeah. So whether it's things that behind the scenes that there's a different side to the story, mm -hmm. but on paper it looks really bad, or literal bad choices that right. we have made right. that it's like, oh, I have to live with that. Mm -hmm. That can be hard to get back up. Mm -hmm. What helped you guys move forward and rebuild life and love after divorce? For me, I had not grown up in church. Mm -hmm. And so in my second marriage, I was in an abusive marriage and God met me there. And so that was what helped me move from that situation out of it and then just continuing to to learn to walk with God. I was So what does that mean? Mm -hmm. If somebody has no context with God, what is God meeting you? What does that mean to you? It, the story that changed my life was um, the story of Peter walking on water. Mm. I was actually at a Mary Kay party, so it wasn't even in church. My mom uses Mary Kay. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I had I had three boys at home, and someone invited me to a Mary Kay party, and I was like, I don't know if I want Mary Kay, but I, a night out with some women would be great. Uh -huh. And it was actually not a Mary Kay party at all. It was a Mary Kay lady that had a prayer night, mm -hmm. and there was a woman there that was speaking from this um, a book about if you want to walk on water, you've got to get out of the boat. Mm -hmm. And that was really the first time in my life that I heard the story, and what I heard that night was as long as I stay focused on Jesus and not the storm around me, that I could do anything, that wow. nothing's impossible. Wow, mm. can you say that again to her? <laughs> I, what I heard was if I stay focused on Jesus and not the storm around me, wow. that nothing was impossible. Mm. Mm. And I had a lot of storm around me yeah. in that marriage. And so the idea of just staying focused on Jesus, and that is really how I began my relationship with him, is just... Oh um, just realizing I wasn't alone. I thought I was alone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of mm -hmm. us feel alone and the storm feels so all encompassing. Yes. So how did you still navigate? So obviously you left an abusive relationship. Mm -hmm. We don't promote anyone's stay in abuse. Mm -hmm. um, and now you're developing this relationship with God. It's like brand mm -hmm. new. How are you doing that in the middle of still living in an abusive situation? I started going to, I started learning to read the Bible. Okay. And I, there was this pastor that, of a small Methodist church that 
um, I met and then I signed up for a nine month walk through the Bible. And it was just, he was opening my eyes because I thought my husband said he was a Christian. So, mm. but he would yell at us all the way to church. And so I'm like, I'm confused. Yeah. And so, as but as I start reading the Bible, it was coming alive for me. And mm. I was like, oh, this is different. This is something, he was opening my eyes to the marriage that I was in, to what was abuse. Yeah. And I was trying to stay in it for my boys and all the things, reasons that we do. And then, but the more I got in it and saw his goodness and his mercy and his grace, then I that's what gave me the courage. To actually leave, to actually get out of leave. an abusive situation. And then just continued that after of just really um, diving in and learn, really learning who I was mm. because I was kind of stuck in this pattern of who someone kept telling me I was. Right. You know? Mm. Yeah. And Whether it's our own negative self-talk mm-hmm. or literally an abusive person yes. or a family yeah. member, right. you yeah. know, f- siblings, friends, lots of people speak mm-hmm. negativity over right. us and it's hard not to believe that. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so that was really it for me it was just this, I had such a hunger then yeah. for God's word and just realizing he means me too. You know, as I'm hearing what he's saying about us, that I am wonderfully made, that we are more than conquer, that we are all the things that he says that we are, yeah. and that he meant that for me, that it wasn't too late. And mm-hmm. we would say the same for you. Mm-hmm. If you're listening and the negative chatter, whether your own or someone else, mm-hmm. we want you to know that you are worthy of love. Your yes. story of redemption, your comeback story, we mm-hmm. want you to be inspired and to hear this. And every time we share our own, we want you to apply it to yourself with so much joy and mm-hmm. anticipation. Because mm-hmm. um, I think there's a lot of times that we either identify with those labels. And so now you're saying, I'm trying to really lean into what God says about me. Yes. And then what was your your background and your struggle? Uh, so my background and my struggle is like it, I was always uh, always into the in crowd. You know, I would uh-huh. say always, uh, you know, always dabbling and stuff, always wanting to go out and party, always wanting to go out and women chase and stuff uh-huh. like that. And that was really the struggle of my background. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I was raised going to church, you know, and, and even, even accepted the Lord and Savior at a uh, Young Life summer camp, mm-hmm. you know, but I was, but there was always that tug to the world, you know, mm-hmm. the worldly ways. And so that was kind of my thorn in my side, you know, my flesh that I mm-hmm. always kind of caved into. Uh, and so that, um, you know, dabbling in that, doing all that stuff was, it, it finally, you know, as um, she'd shared it kind of when we were talking earlier, just off camera, it's like, um, you know, my dad died My uh, three months later, my wife filed for divorce and all those things that I used to play Whoa, with. Whoa, what did you just say? <laughs> so my dad my dad died and three months later, my wife filed for divorce. Oh. You know, it, it was, it was. Um, I it know was you a have tr- a lot of time, but I'm just taking yeah. that in for those yeah. that are like, man, you can go through one Job season after another. And you're, <laughs> <laughs> dear gosh. Okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. So, and so the, uh, so that just became a very dark space in my life. And so I was trying to, during that time, you know, trying to get my walk back. All right. I really need to get my act together. I really Mm -hmm. need to get on track. And so I started trying to walk my life out with that when those two things happened sort of back to back. And so since I'd always been dabbling and partying and women chasing and all this kind of stuff throughout my younger life. And, you know, then I had my daughter trying to get it right. It was something that You know, I I felt like, I almost felt like, really, this is it? You know, I'm trying to, you know, trying to walk with you, God. I'm trying to get my life right. And then this happens in my life. And, and I, what, you know, what I did was I just kind of fell back to what I was doing. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't, I didn't face it head on, uh, you know, and say, all right, this is not, this, I refuse to let this get me off track. I wish I could say I was strong enough, but I wasn't. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so um, I I went through a really dark period uh, and got really involved in drugs and went back to the things I was doing. And and it became from a dabbling to a controlling substance of mine. Um, And so there, I reached a point where I just said, you know what? Uh, It got really dark and I just reached a point and said, right, I'm not, I can't do this anymore. Mm -hmm. I cannot walk this out anymore. I can't live like this anymore. And so I started seeking for a, I knew what I wanted. I wanted Jesus back in my life. And so I started seeking out a faith-based treatment center. Okay. And so I went online, started finding it, and then was able to find a faith-based treatment center uh, in, um, in in Texas that I wanted to attend and, and, and went there. And it was that moment in that time that God met me there. And I tell people, um, if they've read the Bible or they don't know the Bible, is it was the Saul to Paul moment, yeah. you know. And uh, for me, 
And, um, and so that was, that was the turning point for me, but mm -hmm. it was, it was, it was the, it was the things and I share that with people really, because there's things that you dabble with in life. There's things that you play with in life right now mm -hmm. that don't really have a control over you. But if we don't watch what we're doing, we yeah. don't take care of ourselves and really anchor ourselves up to something, the dabble mm -hmm. becomes something that becomes serious in life and can take yeah. control of your life. So Yeah. And I think that can be food, that can Anything. be porn, that can be movies, yes. just mm -hmm. staying home and peeing in PJs mm -hmm. too long, like not actually re-engaging. Mm -hmm. So you both went through terrible heartache. Yep. Life did not look like you thought. Mm -hmm. How did you have the courage to move forward and to start actually like seeing if there could be dating mm -hmm. and hope for the future? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, for me, it was, it, for me, it was your sister. Yeah, it really was. It was my sister. Cause I, I had, yeah, I went through my moment in time and I was like, and, and I was, I was really wasn't sure I was ready to get back out there, honestly. Mm -hmm. And, um, but I'd been hanging around my sister's house too long. And she finally said, you need to get out back out. You know, there's sisters are good for that. Don't you know, enable. like you need to move on. You need to, yeah, yeah. You need to get on out there. And so it was her that pushed me, you know, and I thought, Man, I really do. And so we, she suggested maybe getting an online profile, and, which I'd never done in my life. It didn't, you know, it wasn't anything I'd really thought about, but I did. So mm -hmm. I got an online dating profile and um, put myself out there to say, right? And that's kind of where Barbie comes in the picture and we kind of met in that direction. So nice. Yeah. How about for you? Uh, right after my divorce, I had been online dating a bit, but my problem was I was looking for my value and from a person. Oh gosh. And I think more of us are than we realize. Yes. yes. And, but what happens is when we allow someone else to give us our value, to tell us that we're worthy, we give them permission to take it away. Mm. And so that's kind of where I had been. And so I had gotten off of online dating. I was not doing that. I was trying to really lean in and, with God and, but my kids were going away for spring break with their dad. And mm. I was like, what am I going to do for a whole week by myself? Yeah. So um, I got a seven-day free trial to Yahoo Personals. You got a message from him. Discounts, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I was like, maybe we'll just try it one more time. And then I got a message from him. And Aww. Um, we went out and had the best first date ever. Oh, yeah. that is still 12 years long. That's yes. right. We're now That's 16 right. if you yeah. got the dating. Down in the That's dating, right. yes. And Aww. so, but then date number two, he is when he told me um, where he was in life and that what that he was not having sex outside of marriage and had surrendered everything to Christ. And I was like, that is so sweet. So and it wasn't a turnoff. So if you're listening and mm -hmm. you're like, if I actually have standards and boundaries, are people going to mm -hmm. walk away and think I'm a loser or not want to be with me? Yes. So by sharing that and being mm -hmm. upfront, how mm -hmm. did that affect you? Well, it was great at first, and and the problem was if I'm looking for my value, oh. I now feel rejected. I'm so glad you're being honest. <laughs> yes. I think a lot of people feel yeah. that. Oh, I think it's so important Male to know. Male and female. Yes. Yeah. It's so important to know and just realize, oh, he's not giving me those things. Mm -hmm. So now it's bringing up, it ended up growing me, I'll say that, but it brought up the insecurities. But yeah. what can we do with that is we can either... Um, stuff it. We can, I can run, mm -hmm. find someone else that will do that yeah. mm -hmm. or we can walk through it. Yeah. And thankfully, you know, I was able to, to walk through it. But what happens is even my Christian girlfriend said, he's just not that into you. <gasps> Y'all are just friends and you're wasting your time. Oh. And I'm like, is this true? Am I wasting my time? Are we just friends? Is he waiting right. till he finds someone better? So, yeah. Wow. It also is so, a struggle for men. I mean, it's like, you know, it's because I was, I was on the opposite side of that train, Yeah, you know, where I was a womanizer, I was a woman chaser. And now I'm on this side of like, I don't do this anymore. I don't have sex outside of marriage anymore. Yeah. And, and it becomes almost, um, you know, checking your own masculinity, mm -hmm. right? It's like, I don't have to sleep with women to Prove I'm a man, yeah. you know. Yeah, it's actually more manly to say, "Hey, you know what? Let's abstain. Let's abstain from this right now. Abstain." And, and, yeah, and, it takes and just, more strength. It takes more strength that. to abstain mm -hmm. and say, "Let's let's just figure each other out," mm -hmm. you know. And and one of the things she hated that I said, but I think more <laughs> men, I think at more the time. at the time, I think more men need to say, is I said, "Look, we're really not a couple right now. We're just a couple of people. We're just a couple of friends getting to know each other." You know, and and that was it was hard for her to hear, even hard for me to say because yeah. I'm I, I was always living at the opposite. But it, at that time, I made those choices. Like, look, we're not a couple. 
We're just a couple of friends getting to know each other. And let's mm -hmm. clarify, why do you think giving a scope, a definition of where we're at actually mm -hmm. protected? Because we can now yeah. see we're 16 years now, you have kids, right. you have grandkids, in-laws, mm -hmm. like you have the sweet, beautiful family now. Right. Why did setting that foundation, why was that important? Well, I think because what happens is there's unspoken expectations, mm -hmm. right? That when you meet in, you meet into this, you know, relationship, dating relationship, whatever it is you want to call it, there's this unspoken expectation of where this is going to go. Yeah. What can I expect from you? What do I want from you? What do I need from you? Because there's yeah. needs and wants and wishes and all that are involved in it. Mm -hmm. So it's great to set the boundary right up front. As uncomfortable as it is to say it, and I think as uncomfortable as it is to hear it, I think it, there's also a sense of, ah, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. And now I know where we're at. Yeah. Right now I know who I can be with you mm. because I can take this mask off and yeah. put it down over here mm -hmm. and I no longer have to be that person. I can actually be my true self with you. Wow. And to me, I believe that opens up that opportunity That's right. to really take the mask off and really let's see who we are. Yeah. You know, really let's just, mm -hmm. let's, let's put out all our faults and our flaws and our, and our things on the mm -hmm. table and let's just enjoy getting to go through all this together mm -hmm. and unpack all these things together. Yeah. You like to say, just enjoy the process. And I <laughs> yeah. would like to say, how long's the process? <laughs> yeah, can I strangle you also? Um, so I think that's really important. So what I'm hearing on the clinical side is, like, we are naturally defaulting, especially when we've already gone through committed relationships. We will default to put the fantasy of the relationship I want, and we idealize them yes. into what I've already experienced mm -hmm. and what I either want to correct and fix from my last relationship mm -hmm. and or the idealize this is going to fix fix all my future problems. Mm -hmm. So we're either correcting the past or we're going into the future. Either way, you're not actually developing a real relationship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when I work with people a lot, we'll have to start just disentangling where am I actually relating with a fantasy? And when I'm unconsciously expectation, putting this into you are my person, we're a couple, we're a thing. Then when they mm -hmm. don't meet that, we devalue them and the relationship very quickly. Mm -hmm. And you don't show up as your true self. So there's no real intimacy. So mm -hmm. sex is the only only thing that mm -hmm. binds a couple. Yes. Right. So this frustrating process actually right. helped you get to know each other's real mm -hmm. people, creating mm -hmm. a foundation. Right. I think there's something mm -hmm. you said there says devaluating the situation, right? I think it also devaluates yourself. It's like, oh, I made this mistake again. Mm. I've done it again. It's good. You know, I, I can't, why do I always do this to myself? Mm. Right. And it's, so it, it happens yeah. that way too, right? Yeah. Is that with that unspoken expectation and mm -hmm. now your expectation to me, you're like, Oh, here we are again. Yeah. I just attract these people. I just do these bad things. Why is it always? And that's not the true statement. The true yeah. statement is I won't. Why won't I just uh, open up, lay everything out on the table? And let's like, let's understand who we are. We're not a couple. Yeah, mm -hmm. we're just getting to know each other. So, and as hard as that is to hear, it actually brought some freedom because mm -hmm. as much because I knew he was always honest. Yeah, I may not want to hear it. But he, I always knew where he stood. Yeah. You know, and I appreciated that even when it was hard. Mm -hmm. And it sounds mm -hmm. like he's really taking ownership, responsibility, leadership mm -hmm. in that versus you having to set the terms. Many women yeah. are like, okay, we sleep together, we don't. Toothbrush, no toothbrush, like, where are we right. at? And so that sounds like that actually set a nice precedent by having standards, then she could follow mm -hmm. that even if it was hard at times. Yes. <laughs> we had our difficult moments. <laughs> But about two uh, years in, I, because we did date for four years, and two mm -hmm. years in, I was like, this is too hard. Mm. Because yeah. he mm -hmm. had such a firm boundary mm. because he mm. had also never dated that way. Mm -hmm. So it was, we didn't really hang out at our houses. We would always play that over a table, over dinner. And it just got where he had such a wall up. Yeah. That it wasn't letting me in. Almost mm -hmm. like a little legalism potential. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So dear, at that point, it was like, you know what? I You're not letting me get close at all. And yeah. this is really difficult for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, but that time though, yeah, um, it was like, we went, I went to his house. We prayed together for the first time. And, um, because that was would have been intimate, you know, I think. Oh. And it was like watching a visible wall go down. Oh. The transformation that God did in that moment, mm -hmm. and you can share from your side, but it was 
that was beautiful for me because mm-hmm. he, I was finally able to really see him mm-hmm. for who he was. Yeah. But both of us, we're maneuvering, you know, ground we had never done before. Yeah. Um, so to be able yeah. to do that, he kind of needed that yeah. boundary. I did. And I think, it, I think that, and I was learning through that process too, because she's right. I was just, I was just walking this whole thing out myself. I'm making this decision. I'm completely surrendered, you know, in this area, no sex outside of marriage, no partying like I was used to. But I think what happens is, is um, and I share it with a friend of mine, it, um, and we get stuck in this sometimes. I think new Christians do when they accept mm-hmm. Christ, their Lord and Savior. It's like we think we need to stop being who we used to be. Yeah. And, the, and you don't have to stop. God created you. You're perfectly and wonderfully made. Mm-hmm. He knitted you in your mother's womb. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with you. Mm-hmm. He's not trying to change you. Mm-hmm. The only one thing he wants you to change is your bad decisions. Yeah. Right. So, and I think, and so I say that being because when I was around her, uh, in, in walking this new thing out, I was trying to be this person. I personality wise that I wasn't, yeah. you know, and it was my brother's girlfriend at the time. And I was over at my visiting my brother. And she said, I wonder if Barbie's ever seen the person that I get to see. She probably hasn't seen the best, the best side of you. Wow. And I was like, wow, you're probably right. Wow. You know, because God made me, I'd never been accused of having an indoor voice. You know, <laughs> God made me loud, boisterous, vibrant, you know, joking, always having a great time. And I was not that around her. I was very serious and very undertoned and very, mm. you know, so it was very hard on her. And I can, and now I look back and I can understand it. But, but I think that's the, the trap that we get into when we accept Christ. We have to be a completely different person. No. Mm-hmm. Be who you always were, yeah. you know, just you're not making the bad decisions anymore, but be that fun, loving, carefree person mm-hmm. that God made you. If that's who you are, you whatever personality mm-hmm. is, you know, walk in that. And yeah. I think if I would have done that and realized that from the beginning, it would have been a great process. And the first two years probably wouldn't have been so hard on her, mm-hmm. you know, um, but I was learning that. And so that mm-hmm. I wanted to share that with the audience is that you don't have to change as a person because you've accepted Christ. Be the person God made you always. You're just changing the bad decisions in your head mm-hmm. that you've made. So. That's so good. Mm-hmm. So there's disqualifiers that make us feel like it could never happen for me. It looks bad on paper and or I've made bad choices in real life. Mm-hmm. And then we can over course correct, mm-hmm. right? Like we can mm-hmm. do so many good choices that it's actually becoming controlling mm-hmm. versus a substance controlling me. Now, like my legalism is starting to control me. Mm-hmm. And so that's actually fear-based right. and it's mm-hmm. not based in trust and security. What would you say to somebody that they're like, but I don't know if this is God's will. So you're dating for four years and there's no promise at the end that we're getting married. Mm -hmm. How would you encourage somebody to just stay curious and open to actually find out versus being so afraid of making a mistake that they Mm -hmm. don't even give it a shot? Mm -hmm. For me during that time, because he, we weren't so all in where with some relationships are. Yeah. God was teaching me about me. Mm. And so I was really finding my own identity and I was able to not feel so dependent or codependent mm. and things that I had experienced from my past. Yeah. And so once I really got to a place where I was um, content, so had I not got the guy in the end, I was whole and complete outside mm. of him. Yeah. And so I think it also gave me the freedom to be able to um, be okay with whatever happened. Yeah. You know, through that through that journey. And that I think end. that's a different perspective. If mm-hmm. we're so obsessed with it has to be one end result, mm-hmm. we'll get so paralyzed that mm-hmm. we don't just make the next right step and move forward mm-hmm. with our lives and actually enjoy what is ahead mm-hmm. because sometimes things don't end up the way we want, Mm -hmm. right? Like you can date somebody and it not lead to that. And yet it Mm -hmm. could be the best thing that you absolutely needed for you to grow, Mm -hmm. for your relationship with the Lord, to become a better human, to prepare you for the next relationship. And so having that shift that whether this ends up being or not, I know that it's good for me. I'm doing the work on myself. Mm -hmm. So we have to have you back. We're out of time for today. This is amazing. And if you ever want to work on your relationships, Crawford Clinics, we are a resource, whether it's through our e-courses, our online coaching and groups, or even therapy or premarital counseling. We want to be a resource for you. So shout out to Sky Vault Media, who has done our media today. And thank you so much. How do people thank find you. your book, The Right Combination, Finding Love and Life After Divorce? You can find that on Amazon or wherever books are sold. And you can find us at brave1.net. Ooh, and we're going to have Barbie talk about the Brave Gathering. 
Bye, guys.